Okay, so today we're going to be checking the valve clearances on our SV650. Before we do any of that, we've got to get all the bodywork off. Before we start, don't forget to like and subscribe for more content. Okay, so we've got the bulk of the bodywork off now and we can see the radiator is kind of in the way so that's going to have to move forward it's going to have to be shifted somewhere just so we can get the valves at the front there because we can't see the valves at the front at the moment so we're going to have to move the radiator so we're going to have to hinge the tank up and probably remove it completely it's probably easier to do that actually and the tank there's two bolts at the front and then it hinges up just there and lift the tank off completely once you've undone the plumbing, if you need better access. So we've got the two bolts undone, you can lift the tank up at hinges. You can see the air box underneath. And there's cylinders. Now it's not really going to give us enough access, so we're going to have to probably remove the tank completely, because I don't think we've actually got enough given the cables here. Compass removal, we've got to undo the petrol pipe, which is just unscrewing up there. There's a plug just there needs undoing, and there's a breather there. So we've got all the pipe work undone. So what I do now is undo these two bolts here. And this is the hinge mechanism. Which you can see just in there for the tank. Wait. Now, should be able to just let the tank off and away. So the tank's not out of the way, so the rear cylinder head. Front one's just there. So my first thing we've got to do is get the plugs out, otherwise we're going to fight a compression. So when we Draining the fluid out of there so we can hinge it forward. Basically, yeah, we've got to get the plugs out so we can turn the engine. Fun, fun, fun. So, into the cap. Comes plug. Okay, 
So now we need to remove the caps to gain access to the rocker covers or to the cam cover I should say. Okay, so just going to loosen this up. You use a rubber mallet or something with plastic air, like a drift. There we go. Okay, careful lift off. Damage this seal. So to get the front cylinder, you have to move this radiator forward to do that. You have to loosen these main bolts at the top and there's a smaller one down the bottom which we'll attack in a minute. But we'll get these undone first. Just going to loosen them off so it'll hinge. And then you see the other one, just in there. Need to undo this one completely to allow it to hinge forward. These aren't very tight, they're rubber mounted, so there isn't a lot of um, tension that goes into them at all. So they should undo easily. You see? This pipe's still too short, so we're going to have to undo it, unfortunately, take the hose off and drain the contents into a, into a handy bucket. So it should be the point where I show the simple remove of the end cap here to get the crank, but somebody gummed this up because it was leaking and I had to use a rattle gun to get the bloody thing off. This cap is similarly tight but I've got this loose as well. So just undo this so we can get the marks visible. So we're going to get the crank in the right position. So what we do is we put a 17mm nut 70mm uh, uh, socket sorry, on the nut in there and this then turns the crank so we turn the crank until we see the arm in the window because we're doing the rear cylinder first okay so once we've got the R showing we need to make sure the camshaft is actually in the correct place and on the rear cylinder it's with the cam lobes pointing up and in inwards and you can see there there's the lobes pointing up and the pointing inwards towards the centre of the cylinder on the front it's pointing up and pointing outwards so the range is, can you see that? Okay, so the ranges basically are for the inlet, because it doesn't get as hot, it ranges from 0.1 minimum to a 0.2 millimetre maximum. And the rear cylinder, because it gets hotter because it's the exhaust in this case, ranges from a 0.2 to a 0.3. So the best thing to do is to get your feeler gauges and put out that range. Have it out ready. So, so here's our essential range of sizes. There's 0.1, which is the minimum for the inlet. 0.2 is your maximum. And for the exhaust, 0.2 is your minimum. And 0.3. Quite simply, we're going to just check to see if they fit. So you can see the buckets just there. And we've got to slide the feeler gauge in between the bucket and the cam. And it should slide under without too much trouble on the 0.1. If it's re if it's Gripping it anyway, if it's tight, that means that the valves are too tight and you're going to have to remove the camshaft and change the shim. So then we'll go to the upper measurement on the, and this was 0.2. Now the 0.2 shouldn't go in. And again, you see it doesn't go in. So we are within tolerance. So we're not going to change the, the shim at this point. The exhaust minimum is 0.2. So the 0.2 in this case should go in. And you can see that it does go in just fine. There we are. A little bit tight, but it does go in. 
and then the point three basically shouldn't go in. So the trying to point the point three. If this goes through, then we know the gap is too wide, and we're going to have to change the shim again. And it doesn't. So the valves are within tolerance, so actually we don't need to do the shims. So we've done close, Tom. If we did have to do the shims, what we would do is we'd have to release the tensioner, which is way down in there, to slacken the cam chain off, remove this guard, and remove, undo all these, and remove the camshaft. Underneath the camshaft are the buckets. We lift the buckets out with a magnet, and there's a tiny shim inside. I'll um, post an adjunct video showing how that's done. So before you can remove the camshafts, you need to remove tension from the chain. To make this possible, you've got to remove the cam chain tensioner. Before you start with this, there's a central bolt and two side bolts. A central bolt is effectively the tension mechanism. You need to undo that and get the tension of that first before you undo the two main bolts which hold the thing in place. Otherwise, you'll have a lot of difficulty undoing that nut once the tension has been, been removed. You will need to remove that nut because you've got to take the tension off the spring before you can reassemble at the end. With the tensioner removed, it should now be possible to remove the camshaft. Undo the 10mm camshaft bolts and carefully remove the retainer. A neat little wrinkle at this point where holes have been drilled in the camshaft sprocket is that you can tie wrap the cam chain to the camshaft sprocket. It won't give you as much movement but it may give you just enough to get the bucket and the shim out. Otherwise you're going to have to retime the valves. This may save you that. Although it doesn't always work, and at the end of the day, if it fails, you can always just do the whole thing and tie the sprocket. To get the bucket out, you're going to need a magnetic lever. These are freely available at any car, part shop, or eBay, or something like that. They simply use a magnet to lift the cam bucket out, and underneath, you'll find the shim. Once the shim's out, there is a shim. See there, they're quite small as you can see. They're basically small magnetic metal discs. Once it's out, measure it with a micrometer, take a reading, so 3.14 mils, and then what you'll need then, depending on whether you need to go up a size or down a size, is select a new shim which is either a little bit thinner or a little bit thicker. I'll put a graph on, I put a table on telling you um, the range of sizes for the SV. Fundamentally, if the valve's too tight, you use a slightly thinner shim, and if the valve's uh, too loose, it's too open, you can use a slightly thicker shim. The new shims should have, well, it says that one, 3.2 mils, should have the thicknesses marked on them, so you can use that as a guide. Then simply reinstall the shim back under the bucket and shove the bucket back onto the valve stem. Once you've got your Shimmy valve back in, reinstall the camshaft, but of course you've got to retime the camshaft. So quite simply, for the front cylinder, the arrow mark on the exhaust camshaft sprocket should be pointing straight upwards, starting from starting from the roller pin that is directly above that mark. You then count 16 roller pins back from the exhaust camshaft side, going towards the inlet camshaft side, and where the 16th roller back engages on a pin it should have the arrow mark 3. For the rear cylinder you're looking at the arrow mark 2 on the intake camshaft and that should now be pointing straight up just like the exhaust was on the on the front cylinder. Starting from that roller pin back again you're going to count back 16 rollers to the D on the camshaft where you should find mark number 3 on the exhaust camshaft. Once you've got those rollers in position, once you've got those pins lined up and you can reinsert the cam chain tensioner not forgetting to release the spring so that the finger sprung back to the bolt back up then the automatic tensioner will spring back and push and retension the chain so if your chain's retentioned your valve's back in the right place it's a simple matter of reinstalling the, the uh, cam covers and putting the whole shebang back together and you're done Hope you enjoyed that video and found it useful. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, thank you very much for watching.